Hey guys, today on Cooking with Carby, we're making Tacos Dorados. Tacos Dorados, what are they? Well, everybody knows the 7-Eleven special taquitos, right? Think that, but a whole lot better. Instead of rolled up into tight little rolls, these are gonna be mini corn tortillas folded in half, filled with seasoned chicken, peppers, and onions, and tomatoes, glued together with a whole bunch of melted cheese, and fried until golden brown. Delicious. Okay, let's get started with our corn tortillas. Here we go. Corn tortillas are actually a lot simpler than you might think. There are only three ingredients. First one being one and a half cups of boiling water. Second one being two cups of masa harina. Masa is just, well, corn flour. Not to be confused with cornmeal, it's easily found at most grocery stores. So I'm adding two cups of it into a large mixing bowl and then a couple of pinches of salt. I'm then gonna mix it together a little bit with a wooden spoon and kind of make a well in the center. Into that well in the center, I'm pouring in just maybe the first third of my water, so about half of a cup. And then I'm slowly starting to bring some of the dry flour in, adding the next third of the water, mixing again, and then finally I'm gonna add in the last of the water. What we're doing at this point is just trying to hydrate the flour. So it's gonna seem like there was not nearly enough water initially, but keep pressing it together. See how I'm just scraping down the edges and pressing down towards the middle? This is eventually going to hydrate the masa enough that we can grab a small portion of it and squish it into a ball and have it stay together in that shape. It's not an exact science. You may need to add another splash of water. Depends on the humidity and how close your measurements were. Once we get to that point, we can finish by hand by pressing it into a ball in the bottom and then covering it with a towel and setting it aside for about 15 minutes. During that time, we can set up the rest of our station. I've cut out parchment paper squares that are about eight inches by eight inches. We're gonna press the tortillas in between these. It makes life a lot easier. And now I'm going to show off my beautiful tortilla press. I told my dad I was getting tired of pressing them by hand and rolling them out. It was so time consuming. So I sent him a couple of reference images and he made this in like two days. Like how amazing is that? I'm super lucky. So with my tortilla press, I'm able to just use a cookie dough scooper, so about three tablespoons, to make a ball about the size of a golf ball. Roll it in my hands, place it between two pieces of parchment paper, and then press down, and voila, I have a perfectly circular tortilla. If you don't have a tortilla press, you can still make these, it's just gonna take a little more time. I like to roll the dough into a ball and then use a cast iron pan to press it down to get that circular shape going and then use a rolling pin the rest of the way, aiming for 1 8 inch thickness. Now that all of the tortillas have been pressed, we need to cook them. So into a super hot, preheated cast iron pan they go just for about 30 to 45 seconds per side. I like using cast iron as it retains the heat pretty well, but you don't have to use cast iron. I'm intentionally undercooking these a little bit, flipping them as soon as there's a touch of color on each side as we're going to be frying these. As soon as they come off the stove, store them in a kitchen towel to help keep them nice and warm and also a little more flexible for when we're folding them. While the tortillas were cooking, I brought some water up to a boil in a large pot and I'm adding in two chicken breasts that I've halved. I'm going to cook them for about 15 to 20 minutes or until they reach an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. While we wait for our chicken to cook, I've heated up some olive oil on the bottom of a large skillet, added in one diced red onion, three minced cloves of garlic, give it a mix, let it get fragrant, and we'll see what other ingredients we're using, two cups of chopped fresh tomatoes, one minced jalapeno, four minced scotch bonnets, one cup of salsa, I like this one because it's got some corn in it, and one tablespoon of taco seasoning. I'll post the recipe for my homemade taco seasoning down below in the description. Once the garlic is fragrant and the onions are a little bit translucent, we can go ahead and add in the rest of the veggies, everything except for the taco seasoning. And then we're going to add in the juice of one whole lime and one tablespoon of red wine vinegar. You can just eyeball this part. Let everything simmer for a couple of minutes. We're just trying to reduce away any of the liquid from the tomatoes, the lime juice, and the red wine vinegar. Once it has, we can add in our one cup of salsa. As soon as we've mixed the salsa into the rest of the components, we're going to cover the pan and reduce our temperature as low as it will go and just sort of let this hang out until our chicken is ready to be added in. By this point, your chicken should be pretty close to done, so check it with a thermometer, see if it's reached 165. If you don't have a thermometer, cut one in half, take a look to see if there's any pink remaining inside. Assuming they are cooked, we can remove them from the water, put them into a large bowl, and then using two forks, I'm going to pull and shred the chicken apart. Add the shredded chicken directly into your other pan, give everything a good mix to coat the chicken evenly, and then we're gonna add in our one tablespoon of taco seasoning we mentioned earlier. With the taco seasoning, we're also going to add in one half cup of water, 
and then bring everything up to a simmer one more time and again, cook until we've reduced all the liquid away. At that point, give it a taste, check your seasoning level, see if it needs some salt, see if it needs some more spice. Assuming it's all good, we're ready to start folding our tortillas. Remembering that these are going to be folded in half, I put cheese over the entire thing, a couple spoonfuls of chicken mixture on one half, and then hold everything together with a toothpick through both sides. Set it aside, prepare the rest of them, and then we can move over to the stove to fry. I've got a cast iron pan filled with at most a couple of millimeters of vegetable oil preheated to about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And then very carefully I'm placing the Dorados into the pan with the open side falling away from me so that I can avoid some of that splatter that is happening. The toothpicks are only there to help them hold their shape until one side has fried. After one side is about cooked, I can remove the toothpick with tongs or my hands and then flip the Dorados over. They're going to take about 30 seconds to a minute per side, but we're just frying until they're nice and golden brown and the cheese is melted. Once they have reached that point, I'm removing them, placing them onto a cooling rack in a sheet pan with some paper towel underneath to catch any of the oil that's going to drip off. And then I'm just rinsing and repeating with the rest of the Dorados. Once you get into a bit of a rhythm, you should be able to do four at a time. I find placing them in a clockwise manner helps to keep track of which one needs to be flipped next. Once they're all done, you can plate them up with some cilantro on top and some sour cream on the side. Let's take a look. Now that all the hard work is done, we can finally dig in and enjoy this Taco Tuesday. These are delicious. Cheesy, crispy, spicy, cooled down with the sour cream. What more can you ask for in a taco? Even if you don't take the time to make your own tortillas, these are still delicious. Corn tortillas work a little better than flour tortillas when you're frying them, but even flour tortillas, the filling is what makes these um, extra delicious. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Hope you give it a try yourselves. And if you do end up making these yourself, tag me on Instagram. Let me know. Show me that uh, you're enjoying these recipes. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one.